Hey guys, Chili here. Welcome back to another coding problem video. We're looking at the uh, the interview preparation kit on HackerRank.com. And last time we did the array left rotation. It was it was laughably trivial. I laugh at you. I laugh at your coding challenge. So let's do something a little more interesting today. Uh, this one is marked as a medium problem. Has a success rate of 73%, which is kind of high. A little bit on the high side for a medium, but not too high. Um, so let's check it out. Let's see what it, see what we got here. So you are given an unordered array consisting of consecutive integers without any duplicates. So if we have an array of n integers, uh, those each of those integers we're going to have values ranging from one to n with no duplicates. Uh, no overlapping values. You are allowed to swap any two elements. You need to find the minimum number of swaps required to sort the array in ascending order. Okay. <clears throat> so, and it shows you, like, you know, if you swap 0 and 3, the 2 and the 7 are going to be swapped around here. And you swap 0 and 1, and now the 1 is in the correct... Yeah, yeah you get the idea. It's not that... It's not that complicated, right? Uh, so we just got to figure out minimum number of swaps required to sort this array. Now, right away here, I can see something. Um, this is going to be easier than a normal sort, right? Because a normal sort, you're just sorting values. They could be anything. You have to compare values to other values to see which one is larger. And that determines the positioning in the array. But here, the value of the number itself determines its position. So we're going to commit a uh, cardinal sin here and we're going to we're going to talk about arrays that are one indexed instead of zero indexed. I know. I know. It's very shocking. But if we consider these arrays to be, you know, one indexed, then the value of the number is actually just its index in the array. So we, whenever we look at a number, we already know where it belongs. And essentially what that means is that we can sort this array in uh, linear time, big O of n. Normally sorting is like n log n for most of the, the good algorithms. There are special cases, of course, um, where you can get away with faster, you know, like bin sorting, and count sorting, whatever you want to call it. But in general, n log n. But for this one, we could do big, big O of n. Uh, let's see here. So, I mean, let's say we're looking at this va this value in the array, and we want to put it in its correct position. Well, we know its value is 2, so it goes here. Problem is, if we put that one here, this 1 needs to go in its home, which is here. So we put the 1 in here, but now we got it. We displace the 7. So we got to put the 7 in its place. We got a 6 here, 6 goes here, we got a 5 here, 5 goes here, 4 goes here, and then we're done. So when you shift things, that's going to displace another thing you got to put that thing in its place and when you're all done then you'll have a sorted array so essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to inspect we're going to start at the beginning of the array we're going to expect the first value we're going to say is it already in its correct place if not we're going to put it in its place and when we're going to look at the one that we got there and we're going to put it in its place until we are done and that cycle is complete now that cycle might not be all the numbers. In this case, all the numbers are kind of entangled in a single cycle. You shift one, that displaces another one, and they all displace each other. But it could be the case that, you know, maybe these four numbers displace each other in a cycle, but these three numbers are in their own cycle. So what you have to do is you have to loop through the entire array. You check the number. If it's, you know, not in its correct place, you keep doing musical chairs until you've completed that cycle and then you're done and so you go to the next number in your array. You check it, is it in its correct place? You keep doing that until you reach the end of the array. That's what we're going to be looking at here. So let's take a look at our starting code here. C++, C++ 14 please. They don't have 17 unfortunately so we're going to have to, I don't think they have 17. No, so we'll have to, uh, we'll have to slum We'll have to slum it in uh, C++14, unfortunately. Uh, so what do we want here? We got a vector of ints 
and we're going to return an int for the number of swaps that were required. So first off, let's do int, let's call it count, set that to zero. So now we want to loop through our entire array here and we're going to use size t because that's the type that is used for, you know, indexing and stuff like that. Of course, the name of our loop variable is going to be i. Got to go with the standard i. As long as i is less than r.size, i++. plus plus. Why, you might be asking, why, Chile, aren't you using a range-based for loop? I, lo I prefer the range-based for, but in this case, um, there's a clear link between the index and the value so we want that index so it's better just to use a standard for loop in this case uh so here's what we're going to do we've got to do that leapfrogging we've got to do that shifting of values and when we shift when we displace one value we have to put it somewhere and then we can process it so we're going to create a little temporary hold variable and we're going to set that equal to the array at i index i all right so we copy the value of the the current thing under inspection current value now while that value hold is not equal to i plus one remember the uh the arrays here that we're dealing with their values the first element in the array has a value of 1, not 0. So there's a disconnect between index and value here, which I dislike, but we have to deal with it. So we're going to be comparing, is the value, is it basically, is it in the correct place already? And while it is not, while the hold is not in the correct place, we're going to swap hold and the array hold minus 1. Right? Because hold, that's the value, basically, it, it knows its own position, right? If hold is 2, then that means it belongs at index 1. So we should swap it with that. And now hold will contain a different value. So now we're asking the question, is that value the one that belongs at position i? So we go back here, and we compare this hold to i plus 1. And if not, we swap it, we put it in its position. So just to th make things crystal clear, we're going to look at this uh, sequence here. Uh, so we start off, i is equal to 0, so we're pointing to this value here. We copy that into hold. We inspect it. Is it in its correct position? It is not. So we swap with the thing, the place where it's supposed to be. So, two goes here, one goes here. Now we ask, is this new thing that's in hold, is it in the position that we're currently inspecting? And the answer is yes, it belongs here. So, we would then store in here, and we're done. This goes out of scope. The loop will go back to, go to the next thing, it'll inspect this one. It'll store it here. It'll inspect it. Is it in its correct position? Yes. So it'll just put it back in here, and then it'll go to the next one. Is it in its correct position? Yes. Okay. Next one. Store this one in here. 5 goes in here. Is it in its correct position? No. Swap. 5 goes here. 4 goes here. Is it... Does it belong here? Yes. So this becomes a 4. Then we have 4. We inspect this one. It's a 5 now. So it's correct. And we're done. That's how it works. So whenever something that we have in hold, whenever it's not in its correct position, there's a swap that happens. And so we should increment count. Seems fair. And when that's done, when everything, when the thing in the hold is in its correct position, then we store that into the position in the array that we're currently inspecting. And we loop back to the top, just like I told you. And then when we're done this, we return our count. And that's it. That should solve the problem. Let's run the code. See if it handles the preliminary issues here. It seems to handle them well enough. And so we submit 
and make sure it handles all these other cases. These other t test cases, they often hold uh, corner cases or they're stress cases. They have the maximum number of N to make sure that your algorithm runs as fast as it should. And there you go. That's it. Not a very hard one at all. Um, easier, easier side of these medium problems to be sure. These kind of problems, they come up a lot, like the uh, idea of uh, sorting and counting how many swaps were needed, also known as counting the inversions in an array. And they're pretty common on this site and, you know, others that I've seen. I guess it's a way of, like, testing someone on sorting algorithms without just saying, you know, sort this array. Because obviously, if you just ask someone to sort this array in C++, they're just going to call std sort. But if you have to count the number of operations, then you have to implement the sort yourself. Because none of the, yeah, obviously none of the out-of-the-box algorithms do that for you. So, yeah, common kind of problem that you're going to see. Not very difficult to solve. Thanks again for joining me here. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more coding problems.